as the energy imprinted upon its time and space. The homeowners, the people that were killed, do come back and forth. They usually do when people are here. They're not trapped in this house. That's not the case. And in most cases, it's not. They come back when people are here because they want to be remembered. See, that's the feeling I got. That's what it is. They want to be remembered. That's why we're doing this. And that's what I felt since the first week that I ever came here like 10 years ago. And that's a lot a thing that I've not told a lot of people. I, you know, a few here and there, but I don't think it's the kids and stuff. I think it's that energy left behind that takes the form of, and I know I don't, I know I haven't discussed this with you, you know, because anytime I try and say anything, you know, show me. I was, I was just, <laughs> Stop, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> and you know, most cases too, we, when I work with the groups, I don't let them tell me where we're going. I don't even want to know the town we're going to. I usually drive to whoever's driving that night to their house, and then I get in their car and I go with them. And I hope it's not an axe murder car or team, you know, that kills me. Oh, you mean you won't use them at their, their residence or whatever? No, I won't. Or something? You that's, that's a good thing, yeah. because then you don't I, have time to like drive by it and people, right, you know, people make like, that. Oh, like, oh, I mean, I completely 100% believe in mediums, always have and always will, but like, some people don't, so. Right, and no, so I try to take that all out. Right. You know, you I try to give the, yeah, yeah, I don't give them yeah. the benefit of the doubt. Even me, I was trying to ask you something. You're like, whoa, if you want me to read you, you just, no. Like, dude, yeah. I don't want to know anything, so. Don't tell me, I don't, I don't do it. That's just not it. Yeah. And it's not about the show, because a lot of times, you get into these environments, and there's a medium that's running around going, oh, oh. Like, <laughs> I sense oh. this, oh. That's not, it's, that's a show too. Somebody's just trying to show off. So, I know, you know, one more story before we get into it. I, I got called by a team in Iowa, and it was in the upper, you know, kind of where we are, but just straight up, like right under Fargo. They were auditioning a medium, and I know the team. They said, could you come out and audition this medium for me? Because he says he is, and we, we're kind of leery about this guy, but, you know, we want a medium on our team. I said, okay, I'll come out. So they didn't tell him who I was. They just told me them I was an investigator on their team because he didn't know their whole team. So I pretend I'm there. I came the day before and I did my investigation with them. And we told them everything in the house, matched the homeowners. Um, I even told the homeowners something that their son was making up about the house. Hmm. The house had this, said that there's these coins that kept dropping on the people. And everybody got coins. Everybody got their these spirits were leaving coins. And I brought the homeowners in without the investigating team, except for the, the lead guy, because that's all I ever do. I brought him in and I said, I said, you know your son's making the story up. And the son looked at me and started crying. He goes, How do you know? <laughs> I, he goes, I, and I said, You've been doing this for four years now. He goes, Yeah, he goes, we did that first night as a joke at, on, to a team, and they took it for real, and I didn't want to retain so I just kept going with it. With it. And then the, every team that came, they would drop a coin on them, just so the story kept going. And I said, so I mean, I, we went through the whole thing of the house. The next night, the guy came in, who was the medium, and he was like, oh, I feel this energy here, I feel this energy here. And I ended up calling him Ofer. <laughs> because he was over. <laughs> that means he didn't hit anything. Wow. Oh, okay. <laughs> he was zero for zero. No. Zero for ten. Over, over, over. Over, okay, over. over. I didn't get that one right. You didn't get that one right. <laughs> Tell a quick yeah. little kind of goes along with that. I was here probably five years ago, and um, the night of June 10th, some a group had it, and they had a psychic, and they wanted me to come in. It's like, okay, I'll come check this out. The guy is literally rolling on the floor, but I'm seeing it happen right now. I can't believe it. And it's like, you know, that was happened last night, right? Uh, it's like it wasn't the night of the tenth. It was the night of the ninth. They found right. him in the morning, and he's like, I'm seeing the residual. Uh, <laughs> okay. Have fun, guys. <laughs> See you later. So I'll give you. A, you can get into Johnny. Johnny and I met a few years ago, and. Um, 
and I'll let you go over well, what do you think about weeks. Uh, honestly, and I'll tell everybody here, I've always been very open about it. I've always followed James Randy, a fan of his, and James Randy is a guy that spent his entire life debunking psychics, and you know that was like his big thing. And he was an ex-magician, and he's showing cold readings and parlor tricks and. I absolutely did not believe in psychics whatsoever. I thought it was all a bunch of crap. It's all parlor tricks. And then I end up meeting Scotty. And I mean, we hit it off instantly. You just know, friends, yeah. And I didn't even know he was psychic. And then he ended up doing a, a reading on my wife and mailed stuff that she has never, she just barely has told me. I know for a fact that nobody at all knows this stuff. And. This man nailed it, and since then, I believe in one psychic, at least, <laughs> at this point. Um, I, I absolutely trust everything Scotty says. Uh, and I'm still skeptic to a point, but... Which you should be. I mean, you were telling me stuff yesterday that is absolutely true, that nobody knows. And that wouldn't make sense to most people, but knowing the layout of places and things, yeah, so, you know, I was the biggest skeptic in the entire world, and that guy changed my mind, absolutely. I'll tell everybody, Scotty's a real deal. Because, I mean, the stuff he told us privately, my wife and I, mm -hmm. I know for a fact, no one knows. Yeah, even, even his wife's mom. So. Yeah, and she, I mean, so it's just... <laughs> Let's just leave it at that. I can't say enough about this guy. Like, he, he's honestly changed my whole perception of psychics and mediums in the field. And I will absolutely, no matter where I end up, if I need the help of anybody, he's getting a phone call. <laughs> and I'll be there. So, yesterday, and even when Johnny was gone, today he gave me the key so I can walk around myself. Um, I went and did an investigation of this place. I made sure I was doing it when I was in here. I was hearing footsteps when you guys were doing EVPs. I was, there's a lot of things happening in here. When I, but as you can see, I, that's not how I do it. So mm -hmm. I tell you after. I'm telling you after what I, what I did. So I'm gonna go to Johnny because I walked with him and I can't quite remember everything because when I get in my mold, I go. But I was seeing a lot of things yesterday. Uh, first thing, that he said uh, was that it was two people, not one, and two people is one of the theories that how can you kill eight people and nobody wakes up? They think one killed upstairs, one killed downstairs. Um, and there was also a confession in 1931, a guy named Leroy Robinson said I killed six people in Bliska in the prison out there, and the cop said, hey, you idiot, there was eight, nice try. He goes, he laughed, he goes, I'm telling you I killed six. And he told a story that a businessman in Kansas paid him and a man named Henry Lee Moore to kill the family. Um, the businessman, being F.F. F. Jones, state senator, who lived right up there on the corner. In fact, he said afterwards he went up to F.F. F. Jones's house to get the rest of the money. Jones shushed him away and then went to the river and made the getaway. They took the bloodhounds off the the porch here, and they went straight up to Jones's house right after the murders happened. They said, this ain't right. They got the wrong scent. They brought him back. They went straight to the river. Leroy Robinson insisted on being tried for this in Iowa. In fact, he was so feared in the prison, he told everybody, if you don't break me out, I'm going to kill all you river inmates. And they tried to break him out. Why would he want to come to Iowa to be tried? F.F. Jones, the man that hired him, has got the DA in his back pocket. You name it. Uh, nothing ever became of it, strangely, but both of them were released out of prison about 20 years later. Disappeared. How do you get released out of prison when between the two of you, you're responsible for over 25 axe murders? Uh, and that's another thing Scotty said. He goes, I believe JB was in deep within town things and even further uh, dealings. And that has a lot to do with the F.F. F. Jones theory. Another thing that he said that really struck me, he goes, they were watching. They were stalking this place, getting routines down, which it's 
in the detective notes back then and not I don't know anybody besides myself that have had access to the handwritten detective notes, maybe two other people, and, and they've both written books on this. One of the theories was he was hiding in the barn. There was an indentation in the hay, and he was watching through a knot hole in the barn. Now, when we're walking around, Scotty goes, he was in that back corner. He was hiding back there. And I'm like, nah, no, he was in the front corner. <laughs> gotcha. Then it clicked. That's not the original barn, of course. That was rebuilt. Their barn was farther back to the point where that back corner was their front corner where the indentation was. And I told him this barn wasn't here. The barn was different. The barn was back here. Yep. As soon as he walks on the porch, he goes, this porch is different than what it was. I believe Darwin, myself, and Martha are about the only ones that know that when Darwin bought this house and was putting it back to normal, uh, that back porch had been taken off. So the people that were in Mary Peckham's house decided to put this awesome big front porch on, and they tore off their front porch, and Darwin used Mary Peckham's front porch as this house's back porch. Nobody knows that, but three people that built it. Plus you guys know. Yeah, and that was one of the first things he said, like, this is different. I was like, yeah, you're exactly right. <laughs> Um, he talked, talked about the cellar. Yeah. He's like, I want to go check out the cellar. He walks down in there. You know, everybody's like, Axmer House Cellar. It's got to be intense, insane. Walks down. I ain't got nothing. I go, pretty interesting because this was built on afterwards, like in the 20s, 30s. I mean, they didn't need a cellar to put yeah, it in this heat and water. Pump. <laughs> Yeah, he, he called it that right off the bat, yeah. uh, which is something nobody knows, nobody asks about, you know. And we also talked about the train, which it, which I did. I ended up going with Bill Chapel when you guys were in here. I took Bill and said, let's go get some sodas. So we went up. That was my excuse to get him to go with me. But I wanted to go see where these two guys stayed. And I told Johnny about a hotel downtown that they yes. stayed at. He said there is had a hotel right down by where that theater is now. And I had to think about it for a few seconds. There was two hotels uh, right by the depot and another one called the Fisher. And it just clicked. It's like, oh yeah, that was right next to where the theater is. And it was tore down in like the 30s. I had forgot about that. And then as soon as he said it, it registered. It's like, yeah, there was a... So the killer stayed in that hotel? Yes. Okay. And there was a motel there, hasn't been since like 1930. And I completely forgot that they tore it down and rebuilt, right? And it was right where he said, unless you sit there and go through the library and the history books. And still, it's, it's just uh, the only picture I've seen in this hotel is just the front of the hotel. The reason I know where it is is because Darwin told me where it was. And Darwin, I mean, he lived here, so he's like, almost 80 years old, you know, and he knew every historic spot where these places stood, and he showed me. You can't look it up anywhere. Half the town doesn't even know what stood there. <laughs> you talked about how I thought the father was a man of needs. Mm -hmm. Had his own farm implement business, he was well off. Another thing with that, that nobody knows. Um, I don't even think Martha, who owns the house, knows this. He bought a hundred dollars, uh, hundred dollars share in a CB and Q rail line company six months before he was murdered. I know this because I had the stock certificate with his signature on it. Now, a hundred dollars in stock in 1912. A man that made 28 bucks a month, if that. It's like a year's wage in stock. You have a family of six and you have enough money to put an entire year's wage to a stock. And that's where I got the connection between those two. He was doing yeah, what he was and then he didn't want to stay and they got rid of him. I'm confused. I'm sorry. I'm slow. I'm confused. So this man in the picture right here. Mm -hmm. It was not 
he was not a good guy or oh yeah he's a good guy he's oh, a good okay. guy he's just got into he, something he, he, he just got into something that he shouldn't have gotten into and so he wanted to what hide that from his wife or something it would be like nowadays Sorry. he was selling drugs on the side oh that's where he was getting extra money exactly. and he decided okay. he didn't want to do it anymore they mm -hmm. couldn't trust him to still be alive when he keeps his mouth okay. okay. so they, they killed him okay yes. all right yeah. now I understand that's exactly it my thing it takes a minute broke it down the turn I don't understand <laughs> but what, uh, one, of the, one of the local legends was he stole a bunch of gold coins. Um, and I was like, oh, here's the treasure angle. But going through F.F. F. Jones's personal items and his Bible and his letters, he wrote, he wrote one thing about J.D. Moore. And this always struck me as, is this a clue? Like, that he's dropping and he said that I trusted J.D. Moore enough to handle my money. F.F. F. Jones, the richest dude in town, I mean, state senator, only the president of the bank. Yeah. And all he said was, I trusted J.D. enough to handle my money. And I always thought, is that cryptic? Is that a little thing? Yeah, this is the first time I even heard that term, because I told Johnny about my theory yesterday. And I, I don't even tell my tours this stuff. And so I always thought in the back of my head, did he steal money from <laughs> Jones? Jones he got a pissed and then he whacked him? No. Oh, um, no, I see what you're, okay, I'm sorry. But, it honestly takes me a minute to. <laughs> I mean, he had the whole she thing. She knows you all that to know. I have to like repeat things in my head a few times. Now my I'm just making a lot more sense. My whole okay. goal yesterday was to really try to find the motive. Now, do you think the kids and the, they were he wasn't expecting the kids and the wife to be home? No. And that's where they're talking about no, that. They, they were just collateral oh. damage. Damage. And I, I haven't oh. talked with Scotty with this, but I've always got the sense that these two dudes that he hired, like the Leroy Robinson and Henry Lee Moore. I mean, these guys were on, on the underbelly, hung out in the everybody. I mean, they were like stone cold killers. Right. And I think they. It's just yeah, found it. yeah, because it was only probably on him. Mm -hmm. the, hit, the hit was probably him, but the damage went because they were having fun and they just went crazy. I just can't it. understand how somebody, even for something, maybe the father or the mother or whatever, if parents would done, how can you hurt I don't know. little children? Well, especially I think, else I think that children. they didn't want, because they knew the face. Right, so, it was, <coughs> so they would have been able to say that this guy did it or whatever. That's why. My, my personal, and, and it's all just personal opinions you know, with me, um, I think these guys just Not were nuts right. and loved to kill. And they're like, right. if we're, we're hired to take out JB, we're taking everybody out. So there's no. Nobody can say anything. Nobody can say they didn't see us there. So. Yeah, there's no trail. Don't leave a trail behind. Hmm. You know, I mean, these guys aren't nice. Guys, they you see, my thing is killing twenty some people with axes. Yeah. Why well, didn't because he want, they wanted to get paid for it. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they only got a portion of the pay. Yeah. Right. So then, why kill them? Because they know that they're not going to get a portion of the pay. Well, they, they killed them. Up. But they didn't know. They didn't know. They didn't know. Remember, he, he said that, right? That he yeah. they went there afterwards. After they killed and them. And they didn't get paid for it. And then that's yeah. when they okay. Yeah. Wow. And at that point, I mean, what are you going to? Go up to the district attorney, and he owes us money for killing for people. For killing people, you know. Yeah. And Jones is so powerful. I mean, this guy's. Why not whack Jones? No. I thought that when you said that. Why not kill him? Because it got hot quick. Yeah, they probably wanted to get out of town maybe quickly. Yeah. See, and that's the only other loose thing you have. Mm -hmm. Well, you got the richest guy in the world. He could, you know, or the richest guy in the area, you know. So. And he might even have said. Leave town for bed, let this cool down, I'll give you the money. Yeah, you know, yeah you know, we don't know what oh, money. Okay. Now, I also, yesterday, I couldn't come in for the longest time. The moment Johnny was taking me in, I started bawling. We had to walk away because I didn't want you all to see me crying. I don't care if you see me crying, but I didn't want to influence your evening. And I was bawling. <laughs> Johnny's all the tears, I was just, I even had to give him a big hug because I just was bawling. It was bad. And then I threw up after going upstairs. I was walking up the stairs. I finally had the courage to come into this room. I got into the room and I said, okay, Johnny, let's go. We're going upstairs. I have to. I 
got up about three quarters of the way, all of a sudden, <gasps> and I caught it and I went running to the bar. I went behind the bar. So I didn't want you guys all seeing it. What did you see? Well, I saw the whole thing happen and, and I explained to him I thought all the pattern happened upstairs. And this pattern. Is that hanging those two people? This pattern will. Okay. An experience and it validates it and it validates your guys' experience last night. There was one time I was doing my rounds every day before day tours. I'd go through the house. I was, I've been in here millions of times. Like, it's my job, you know. Um, so I'm walking from the parents' room to the kids' room, just making sure the house is clean. I pause right in front of the attic and I start tearing up. And I felt like the most overwhelming sadness. I was like, get a grip, man, what are you, you know, <laughs> come on. I haven't cried, you know, I, I just, it hit me and I started crying. And I went outside and was like, man, I need to get a grip on myself. Your guys' the scream that you heard in the attic. Was that in the attic? Yeah. Yeah. Scotty proceeds to tell me that he kills the parents and he goes to go in and kill the kids. When he walks in the room, Catherine Moore runs out and goes and tries to hide in the attic. Which would explain the sadness I felt. Because she's seen everybody being killed. From that she's moment so and the scream scared. you guys heard. Yep. Oh my God, that's sad. So that scream was Catherine? Probably. Now, that's that's what you heard, that's what, that's the exact pattern I told him yesterday yeah. afternoon. Not today, I told him yesterday afternoon. And that pattern goes against the grain of what I've always thought. Uh, and it was just my bullheaded thinking of thinking I know exactly, you know. But so when the attic that, door slams open, is that then finding her and dragging her out? Yeah. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. That's what I felt. That's what I figured because that door just goes bam. <laughs> so we just that, that little door in there used to slam open so much. That whole side we had to replace the the drywall. It was the old slat walls, and it slammed open so much it destroyed that whole wall. The plastic yeah, wall that's where down. they would have been going after her. Yeah. He went after her. So now, like, okay, that was right after. Maybe you can answer this question for us too, because I would care about it too, Chrissy. But we had gotten a recording that said we're happy that they were late. Like. Did, did something happen before that, and that's why, like... They're at a church program. Yeah, I know what I'm uh, saying. Like, what happened to the... To the that's another... My yeah. thought... And, I, I was mean, confused Scotty's about that. Scotty's probably like, the one that Would it have happened this, differently? Would she not have seen that if they were late? My thought is, okay, during the church service, there was... F.F. Jones always sat in the front. He was a big, important, look at me guy. This time, he sat in the back. And at one point, uh, during the, in the detective notes, People witnessed him halfway through the thing going outside, coming back in about 10 minutes later. And they were thinking, you know, was, was he like, say, giving somebody the okay, like they're all here to like go ahead and go in the house or something? Um, to me, I would think that's glad they were like, because coming in so they could kind of get all situated. Right. They probably sat and talked to people after church and slowly maybe. That was just another question besides the screen. That's I'm just me guessing. That. Scotty's probably the guy to ask. Okay, you know, I'm going to figure that about. one, but I didn't say anything about that, so. Was that the not... church up there that they were, that they were going to? It was two blocks up. Yeah, that's okay, on the corner there. I was just curious. Big park for home. So that's what I encountered when I was here. And that's why, with your validation of your investigations, last night and what you guys found matched very similar to what I told Johnny yesterday. So would you have been able to tell if there was somebody here with us that we were just if I was if, if I was here, yes, I would have been able to tell you. Okay, that was I was curious. Because she was a... Now, is there, was there one male upstairs and one male downstairs? Yeah. There was one male that started here then went up there. But there was already somebody up there. Right. Another guy. Yeah. Okay. But I do believe the one guy killed the six. And well, that was the guy you were talking about at the beginning. Yeah, Leroy Robinson. Yeah. But I think I think he ended up holding people down. 
my hair standing up. <laughs> and you know, it's very, yeah. very hard for, I'm a pretty bullheaded guy, and it's very hard for me to go against what I believe. And then, when, as Scotty's telling me this stuff, it's like all clicking in my head, along with stuff I've encountered here. And it's all like puzzle pieces being put together. And finally, I kind of seen the big picture, and it's like, he's absolutely right. It's probably exactly what happened. And it makes sense with the stuff I've experienced with that door, with the sadness right there, with hearing the scream. I was here about four years ago, just sitting, it's about two in the morning, I'm sitting right there by myself, just being quiet and like getting the natural sounds and up. I don't know where it was, it was upstairs I hear. Ah! That girl scream. And it was a oh man, that's a long run to the door. <laughs> I was thinking about that. I was sitting here while you guys were up there. I'm like, man, that's a long distance. If I see something down here and I'm walking, that's a long walk over to that door, you know, and I don't want to disturb what you all were doing. Well, I scared the ever the crap out of Daphne last night because with the thing about the door opening, this door down here, we had just came, we had all come out. Me and Christy were down here getting ready to go outside, and they were still upstairs shutting the door. So we opened this door, and it squeaked. And she they almost fell down the stairs. Out, literally almost fell down the stairs. So yeah, slipped out. She was like, that door just opened. And Chrissy wanted to see it because she's like, no, maybe it was. Like, maybe they heard it. I was like, I want to go see. I'm yeah. like, pass them on the door. Let me see. Let me see. <laughs> So, and, it was just this time. Now, let me ask you. While they were up there last night, I heard this down here. But I heard high heels walk from this room out, up the stairs to where they were. Because I could totally hear this, the footsteps of the high heels. Now, did they wear high heels in that era? No. They would be like the, they the were kind of those shoes. Yeah, the, like, they, they were little slots. There were, there were, there were uh, like, click, 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 but you, you well, could see, tell. Here, Scott, the one thing is remember that that this house survived after well, that's true, and other true. people lived here. So you can't always put everything in the same in the same time frame. Yeah, we're probably getting other things. We were talking about that, like, right. We're getting other things from other spirits that have been right, here. Yeah. There's okay. a lot. It mixes. So you have to go really figure out what's going on. Right. The other thing is is we talk about, and I just want to, I forgot who I was talking to. I talked about you last night. I'm sorry. I'll just say it again. EVPs in themselves, you cannot go off of the tone of the EVP. You have to. I mean, go this off was no. This was ear. No, I know, but I'm saying this is another point of mine. Is you can't. Because a lot of people there. say if a spirit yeah. comes across like, hey, yeah, yeah. You, you can't say that that's evil. Because again, yeah, there was a really last night. There was a really deep voice that said when we asked, you know, are you behind her? Because she said she felt something behind her. Yeah. And it was a really deep, almost, you know, I hate to say it, but almost like demonic voice. And then, you know, was by the, it was something about where we're behind them, by you, by the window, or something behind her, by the window. And but how, do you, how did you know, know even was, though the deep voice was a girl that was scared? Yeah, I don't, we don't know. You know, don't so know. You, you we, can't, we saw you somebody standing in that window. Right, too. I mean, yeah. the spirits are there, but you can't jump to that conclusion. You can't go from one point here to over here when it's around the corner because. You, could, you know, so in EVPs, when you work, and make sure that we're, you're really looking at the message and how it was responded to you, and then your personal experience. And you're getting back to that, but it's about personal experience. It's you about know, you. When I kind of look back on all the years I've investigated and stuff, like EVPs, I hear one thing, somebody else hears a totally different thing. Like temperature gauges, if you key a walkie right next to a temperature gauge it'll drop 30 degrees instantly you know there's all kinds of inconsistencies with technology and things interfering and now that i think about it scotty has validated more truth to things than half the investigations i've done with the awesome equipment you know and that for me just kind of blows my mind and it's and it's a me so please just the, like I, I always end my thing with one thing: the best, the best piece of equipment for you to investigate with is you, and it always will be because we are spirit too. We are spirit, and 